Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay. We're coming today from the Perry Institute in Amherst, Massachusetts. When I talk to some big capitalists, big investors, and I ask them, how come, how come you guys aren't going nuts about climate change? Uh, you know, in the short term, I can understand you can make more money somewhere else. But aren't you worried about, you know, we're not even talking that long term anymore about the consequences. We're already seeing consequences. Aren't you worried about it? And often I hear the answer, you know, when it's needed, some new technology is going to come. And really, we don't really have to change all that much because we always have this power of invention and we will figure out a technology that solves it. And until then, there's really no reason to do very much about it. Well, that's not what scientists are saying, but it's also not necessarily what needs to be done or what's possible. It may be that we can, lots we can do without waiting for new technology. So now talking to someone who thinks we need to get started now and can get started now, and that's Bob Poland, who's joining us in the studio. Thank you for having Bob's me. Bob's co-director of the uh, Perry Institute. He's the author of Greening the American Economy. Of course, global it's economy. Greening the Global Economy. And, but you obviously that America's some part people of the don't think yeah. American, America's yeah. really in the global economy, but we know it is. Um, Bill Gates is one of the advocates of this, uh, this idea that we will come up with the new invention, and in fact, that's the only way to deal with it, because you really can't turn the ship of the global economy around any other way. What do you make of the argument? Well, uh, Bill Gates uh, came to the uh, November Paris conference uh, with some of his colleagues and uh, said that you know the, the critical thing that needs to be done is some new major technological breakthrough using technologies to generate clean energy in ways that we have not envisioned thus far and that has to be the critical focus and he himself pledged I don't know a billion dollars and some of his uh, the other people the other billionaires said that they would do the same uh, of course, it would be great to have new technologies emerge that deliver clean energy cheaply and efficiently. Uh, however, what the, this, the situation that we have now is A, that we need to take uh, dramatic steps immediately and we can't simply wait for new technologies to occur. And B, the fact is uh, it's already cost effective to invest in green energy. In fact, that is one of the critical messages of my book that you were nice enough to hold up. Um, the, the point is, if we, if we talk about two types of green investments, one is energy efficiency, and the other one is renewable energy, solar, wind, geothermal, some hydro. Um, look, the, the investing in energy efficiency by definition, pays for itself. It's a matter of two or three years, maybe four years. If you, if you retrofit a building to make it operate more efficiently, that means you're going to consume less energy and still have the building be just as, as comfortable and have just as much lighting. So energy efficiency investments pay for themselves in all regions of the world. And so what we need is a revolving fund, such as, by the way, exists already in Germany. Germany is held up as the star uh, in terms of green energy performance. And it is. It's, it's a deserved accolade. Almost all of their accomplishments are based on having a high efficiency economy, not investments in solar and wind. Those are good, but the, the real action is with energy efficiency. And they have a public development bank that promotes energy so efficiency. So let's make that concrete. What's their examples of energy efficiency? Energy efficiency is making buildings, number one, making buildings more efficient because buildings consume about 40%. So, 40 so keeping heat in, don't look. Yes, yeah, so, you, so insulate the building better. Have a better uh, heating and uh, air conditioning system. Uh, have tighter windows. Um, th those are the critical things that I mean, we're that's pretty basic stuff. It's I, extremely I mean, it's, it's stuff basic. We, it's it's doing stuff when that you, you and I were kids. So. It, it's stuff that you, you, you don't need any high tech anything. So what's stopping that? I mean, we've heard President Obama say this. We've, everyone talks about it. Right. And in fact, as I think I've said on another occasion on the Real News Network and elsewhere, look, in 2007, the U.S. Congress passed the Energy Inde Independence and Security Act, signed by George W. Bush. Under that law, the uh, U public buildings, federal buildings, are all supposed to increase their efficiency 
uh, by 30%, or 75% of the buildings, sorry, by 30% by the end of 2015. Well, guess what? We're already in 2016. We've maybe done 5% of the buildings. Even those investments, however, have saved U.S. taxpayers hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So why don't, I mean, starting with the federal government, uh, retrofit every single building and save tens of billions of dollars for taxpayers. So what, what's the new technology that we need? There is no new technology that we need. Now, when we talk about solar, wind... Um, well, but just back okay. up one step. Yeah. So why not? Why isn't it? It's, it's such a no-brainer. Uh, I mean, is there economic inertia? Interest I mean, there is, there is an initial, you know, there is upfront cost and there's organizational, there's hassle factors. I mean, you have to do it. And the, yes, you have to put up the upfront investment in, say, the new insulation, in the new heating and air conditioning. And of course, uh, I assume yeah. there's thousands of jobs created to do it. It is the single best source of job creation in, in, through, through any kind of energy investment. And these are construction jobs. These are jobs for truck drivers. If we take a, like, take a city like Detroit or, or Cleveland, uh, you know, where you have very high unemployment rate, uh, and you've laid off a lot of construction workers, you could create tens of thousands of jobs by committing to raising efficiency so are, standards. So are any of the candidates in, in, in this now election cycle promoting this? He did single out energy efficiency as, as part of the green agenda. So it's not just it, green buildings is the number, should be the number one priority because we waste so much energy in buildings and energy consumes 40% of all energy. Uh, not just electricity, all energy, 40% is buildings. Uh, then transportation systems. Invest in public uh, transportation. You're going to, you know, you're going to achieve major savings. And again, this is an infrastructure investment. It's good for jobs. It's good for urban planning. It's great for uh, energy savings. What is the new technology that we need to have more buses or streetcars? Or okay, we we could have. Uh, subway systems, but basically we don't need new technology. I mean, I'm not against new technologies, but we don't need them. You don't have to wait for them. No, we do don't have to wait. Cars, I mean, Obama has, to his credit, said that set the standard for energy efficient cars by 2025 uh, to be roughly double uh, what they are now for the new cars, which means that in, uh, you know, with a turnover another five years, roughly we're talking about every car on the road in the U.S. is going to be at the level of a Toyota Prius today. Okay, that's a Toyota Prius. It would be great to have something even more efficient, but if we got everybody in 20 years driving the equivalent of a Toyota Prius, that is going to achieve 50% savings uh, on, on emissions uh, from automobiles. So those are the kinds of things that we need to fi start financing and promoting right now. The, the other new tech argument I've, I, we've all heard is that there's going to be some new tech that sucks carbon out of the environment. And, and there's a lot of talk that that's going to be the, the, the real Why solution. should we do that? We can run a zero emissions economy uh, within 35 or 40 years talking about the things that we already know can work. Why should we uh, instead commit to maintaining uh, burning fossil fuels that are going to generate emissions and then come up with some new technology that nobody's ever heard of, uh, that has, there's no evidence that it works, that's going to suck all the carbon out and then, by the way, what are we going to do with that carbon? We're going to have to store it underground for all eternity. And the level of storage capacity that we're going to need is equivalent to the, all the oil that's already underground at present. So this is a project that is going to take you know, hundred, you know, tens of years to do, that there's no evidence that it can work, and we already have solutions right before us that can work. All right, thanks for joining us. Okay. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.